Card Player is here at Caesars Palace for the final table of the Caesars Palace Classic. Now this $10,000 buy-in tournament provided a very diverse final table. One of the players won his seat in through a high-hand promotion that Caesars ran prior to the event. Uh, my name is Jose Valdez. I've been playing poker about five, six years. I was over here about two months ago and actually I was playing over here in Caesars and I won the entry free. Uh, I actually got the best hand of the week. I was playing cash game and I got the best hand of the week and I got in. I'm playing, you know, big cards and uh, I'm not trying to bluff any of these guys over here. They're too good. I mean, top players. I just play my game and, you know, being aggressive when I have to be aggressive and just, you know, relax when I have to, you know, nothing. The cards do their job and I just, I just play them. The way I, I play my cards, you know, aggressive, that's what I do. I'm like the second short stack. Uh, I'm just gonna see how the table feels in the beginning and I go by feeling, I don't have a strategy before I go to a table. I go by whatever I feel at the time, how the, the, the table is playing and stuff like that. The final table also features some well-known poker professionals like Justin Bonomo. Yeah, there's a huge hand against Vivek that I won. It was like, he was first in chips, I was third in chips and it was a $600,000 pot. I turned the nut straight and he also turned top two pair and we got it all in on the turn. Um, after I won that pot against Vivek, I played pretty tight and straightforward and uh, won a couple of small pots here and there. I didn't win that many chips after that point, but like I was at 600 then and I'm at 700,000 now. I think the Caesars Palace Classic has been a great tournament, especially because of the overlay. Even though they put in like 50 people because of like free roll winners or big hand winners, I don't even know what the deal is, but there's like $120,000 added, so it's really sick. Um, I feel like everyone at the final table is a pretty good player for the most part. Uh, I know Tony's really tight, Scott Fishman plays pretty weird, but um, there's no one I'm really worried about, but everyone's you know good enough to hold their own. Uh, the final table's kind of a weird setup because there's four big stacks and five small stacks. Um, I can't really predict exactly how it's going to go, but I think the big stacks are going to stay out of each other's way and kind of pick on the small stacks, and if that's how it plays, you know, I'm game. The best structure is always the one where the blinds go up the slowest, and especially for the good players. And, you know, I'd always prefer a slow structure. I mean, I'd love it if the blind stayed at 6, 12 the whole time. It would take, you know, 24 hours to finish, but winning this tournament would be huge for me. I've had five scores over $100,000, and I've never had a score over $200,000, so that's been my goal for a while now. I feel like, you know, I get pretty lucky and run pretty good until the final table, and then I just never want a hand. The weakest aspect of my game, I think, and don't tell this to the other players, I have a lot of trouble folding to small bets, and I've been trying to work on that, because a lot of times people bet really small in the river, and they know I'm not folding, so it can't be a bluff, but I just, usually there's so much money in the pot, I can't fold to those small bets. With nine players at this table, all with their own diverse style of play, this should be a very exciting final table. Be sure to keep your browser locked on cardplayer.com for live updates, photos, chip counts, and of course videos. I'm Lizzie Harrison for Cardplayer TV.